Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. This month, you will not see shame. Amen. This month, you will not end in reproach. Amen. This month, you are forbidden to suffer defeats. Amen. You will not be a victim to the enemy's plan. Amen. The mighty hand of God will make a way for your rest. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. God will settle you early this month. The lines will fall for you in places and places. Whatever is due to you will enter your heart. Your blessing will not be diverted. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Put your hands together for the Lord and please be seated. Understanding how God leads today. We started a series yesterday and we are continuing today. Divine direction is the greatest need of every child of God, but yet the most neglected. Everyone wants to do his own thing. But I want to shock you this morning, you don't have your own thing. Everything you will have, everything you will acquire, God must guide you. Amazingly, divine direction cuts across every area of our life. Every area. You want to buy a car now, you need to be directed. Somebody say, ah uh ah, -uh, car too. Let me shock you. My Dickens board chairman in one of my stations went to buy a car. They just brought the car. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? As they brought the car, the car knocked engine. They changed the engine. He knock another one. So when they repaired it, he said, I should come and pray. I said, Dicky, they need to waste this oil. Oh. I said, go and sell that car. He said, why? I said, the person that owned that car was under a curse. You don't know what he has done. If you ride that car, you will die. God is giving you signal. You brought the car, a knock engine. You buy another one, put in knock engine. Something follow that car. I say, sell it off. Don't use that car. Don't even say, I will give it to my wife and buy another one. Sell that car. That car came with a cost. He was shocked, but he did it. You know, some of these cars Nigerians go to steal. They can steal in Florida now, move to Maryland. Still in Maryland, I moved to Ohio. Still from uh, Ohio, I moved to North, Car uh, North uh, Carolina. That's how they thief. And as you are collecting it, anywhere you go, may God punish you. Punish your papa. Punish your mama. Punish. In fact, you go die inside that car. They are placed a cost for the person. You understand what I'm saying now? That's why most of those Bini boys that go to steal cars, they don't prosper. You, who has been to Bini before? Most of those cars, they are heaped, packed everywhere. Who they buy? Who they buy? So you need to be directed. You need to be guided in everything you do. Even to marry, you need to be guided. Even the stubborn ones that feel that uh, nobody to need to choose for me. I marry who I love. <laughs> hey. You go just discover, say that your emotion will expire. When the thing don't expire, you will now meet the real thing. Proverbs chapter 3. In business, you need to be guided. Now, 
We'll take it from verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding in all thy ways. In how many ways? How many ways? In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall do what? Direct thy path. He shall direct thy path. He shall direct thy path. Let me open up somebody's heart now. One of the greatest fear of believers is that if God leaves them, he will lead them to what they don't like. That's why when it comes to marry, they don't feel like praying because they are afraid that God will lead them to who they don't like. How can God lead you to what you don't like? Jesus said, if your earthly father being evil knows how to give good gifts, he said, how much more will your heavenly father? So divine direction is a need in everybody's life. If you are not guided, hear this, you may cut your journey short. You may end up in a place where you don't like. There is a way that cement right unto a man. But the end thereof is what? Destruction. Everybody needs direction. Now the prophecy have gone forth, what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard. Man, you need to be guided to what eyes have not seen. You need to be led to what eyes have not seen. If you are not guided, you will be living your life in trial and error. But hear me, you don't have all the time to keep making mistakes and be getting corrected. Time is passing you by. Life is tied to time. So how many mistakes will you make to reach at the writing? Make 100 mistakes. You can't convert it to one right one. Where you need to be in the next one year, in the next five years, in the next ten years, you need to be guided to reach it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want Scripture says, when he led them, they tested not. We suffer more when we are on our own than when he leads us. They tested not. They didn't beg. They didn't suffer for want when he led them. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leaded me beside still waters. Not trouble waters. Not where there is confusion, not where there is katakata. So at every phase of our life, there is need for inquiry. Lord, should I go? Lord, which step am I to take? Lord, this decision. Do you know that in some of the things we are doing, God is not even involved in our decision. We just make that and say, this is what I want. No. At the same time, you say, Lord, are you involved in this thing? Are you involved in this thing? If you ignore divine direction, get ready, you will suffer more frustration. If you ignore divine direction, you will suffer more frustration. More, more, more. Because God cannot lead you to where he cannot go with you. Don't forget yesterday, he said one of the benefits of divine direction, he said, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. So if God is involved in where you are going, you are exempted from being frustrated. Why? He's going before you to clear the obstacles.
to clear the barriers. I remember making a journey one time. <laughs> God told me, if you embark on that journey, you will suffer. I said, hey, so far. I had to go back. I didn't go again. Because I've, I told you I've had an experience before. The vehicle got spoiled four times. On the road, I was not saying, have mercy, Lord. Transport money finish. Is this a um, national concord? They are Hilux, uh, this in the carry paper. They were on their way back from Lagos. The vehicle got spoiled. The, the fourth one spot, got spoiled at Shagamu. We just say, Lord, have mercy. The blood of Jesus. Have mercy. The blood of Jesus. So we, we, had, we just flagged the young man down. So he said, Where did they go? We say, Oh, Jota. Because I know that if we reach Ojota, we don't reach. Are you here saying that the rest can be done by trekking? <laughs> because there are plenty shortcuts. So immediately we reached with my, my nephews them. I said, I'm going to go trek now. So I had to trek and go to um, Alausa. He said, oh, in here, Alausa is near. It's not far. Am I saying the truth? <laughs> After that day, if I get a signal that the journey will not be well, I will stop. There was a day I was to travel to Uzi Abuja or to Uzi Abuja or to Goshen. She said, I don't think you should go. I said, I've already received a signal that the journey will not be good. I had to stop. It's not everything you do with bone face. You enter bone trouble. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? <laughs> That's if you come back alive, oh. Please. We have made too many mistakes. There is no need to make more mistakes. Because the more mistakes you make, the more time is passing you by. You will miss opportunity. You will miss great chances. So there is need at every venture. Lord, are you going with me? Will this thing be, be, be successful? Will the outcome be good? Please, there is need for us to ask. He say, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Which means, let him be in the know. Let him be in the picture. Get him involved. One young man said, uh, my parents have agreed, so what am I asking God for? After the parents have agreed, the marriage finish. Come and see fight. Come and see fight. The same parents that agreed were the same parents that asked him, did you pray? Because they felt that he prayed. But they never knew he never prayed. They were the ones that were not telling him, this thing no go work oh. By all means, this thing no go work oh. Meaning they were telling him, divorce her. Divorce her. He was not telling the parents, but the Bible says, make we no divorce. They say, no be in this house. This one, you must divorce this one. Hear me. Don't start what you can't finish. What did I say? I learned that one from my father. Don't start what you can't finish. If you know you can't finish it, don't start it. Now there was another vibrant brother in the church. Went and picked one sister from the choir. Don't say I'm attacking you because I call choir. Are you the only choir?
after he has proposed, done introduction, did everything, the Holy Ghost was this. The Holy Ghost took away his peace. One of the signs that God is leading you is you have peace of mind. The Holy Ghost took away his peace. He was troubled. In the midst of the trouble, he was struggling and managing the relationship. God was still telling him, you are not going. You are not going. The day of the wedding, everybody was in church. The young man stayed back at home. Enter toilet. You can't silence the Holy Ghost. Who give you tongue? God can change his mind. When God makes a decision on your life, there is no reverse gear. He go, Jago, Likateke, Ekeke, who? You can't use tongues and confuse the Holy Ghost. You know, there's a way choir we sing and they will be waiting for the man to come. They will sing, sing, sing. They will hand over to another person. They hand over to another person. They sing, sing. They hand over to another person. They sent message. He switch off phone. Now, do you know what happened? The girl, after waiting, entered the car. She knew where this guy would be. She entered the car, went straight to the place, opened the door. She was hearing the sound in the toilet. Lago da gaya gaga gaga. The young man was sweating. He was dressed on suit, but he was sweating. Guess what came out from the guest's mouth? Now your God save you today. No cry. She was not crying. Now your God save you today. She didn't feel any harm that uh, the young man didn't come. She knew where she was coming from. She was a classified agent from the marine. The young man did it, but God helped him that day. May the Lord help you. I said, may the Lord help you. So, there is no area of our life that we don't need direction. Maybe you don't know. Satan is setting traps every day. And the trap Satan is setting now is high-tech traps. Do you know what we call high-tech? Traps that are coded with technology. It can trap you. Trap you from every means. So we need direction. You need direction even for who will stay in your house. You think it's everybody that you bring come and put inside your house. Some people you bring and put inside your house, they are witchcraft. Professional manipulators. They will design your house for you. Your house will now become television in Kovun. One brother went to bring a house help. The house have now came to initiate the children. But the intervention was this. Anytime she makes an attempt, an angel will appear. Not knowing that that house has been saturated. When your house is saturated with divine presence, it becomes practically impossible for any witch to operate. Saturated. That house was drinking anointing oil. Regular. With the blood. Anytime she will want to take the child, the angel will say, if you touch her, I will strike you. She was the one that confessed. If you touch her, I will strike you. So, finally, she now confessed that she wants to, um, she want them to pray for her. So, the madam was now in Christy, oh, pray for you for what? He said, I want to meet pastor. That was how she confessed. All the several attempts she has made to initiate the child, no one worked. So they prayed for her, did deliverance for her. So they were now asking, should she stay? I said, no, she should go. 
they should take her back to where they brought her from. I know you'll be more spiritual than me now. You know, members have sex more than pastor. <laughs> she she stay. I say no. She should go. She has been delivered. Hand her over back to the to the owner. In Jesus' name. Before she will now stay and reinforce and regroup and redevise another strategy. Praise God. So at every phase of our life, we need direction. Now the reason for the direction is so that our life can be patterned. If your life is not patterned, Satan will pattern you. Now hear me. You can't miss the two. Either your life is patterned the way God wants it, or Satan will pattern you. Already, some people are already carrying a pattern. You have made several mistakes, committed so many errors, fallen into too many traps. So, when you make a choice for direction, you are giving your life an order. You are giving your life a pattern. Scripture says, let everything be done decently and what? In order. So when your life is following a direction, your life is following a, an order. What to do and what not to do. What to avoid and where. You can't miss it. But some people want to still be in church and be making attempts in several hours. It can't work. What fellowship has the sons of righteousness with the sons of Belial? It's not possible. You can't mix the two together. Direction instills order. But many in church want their life to be under their own control. But scripture said, let's read it. Jeremiah chapter 10, I think verse 23. It is not a man to direct himself. Oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. Is it in you? It is not a man that walketh to direct his steps. It's not in me. It's not in you. So direction is controlled by God. Even Jesus himself said, I do nothing except I hear. I do nothing except I do what? Hear. Everyone that subscribes to direction has registered for divine speed. Divine speed. Speed of accomplishment. You change motion. You enter what we call frequency of supernatural progress. Why? When your paths are ordered, you get to the right place at the right time. Meeting the right people. Having the right kind of experience. Yesterday I talked about a pastor, a pastoral assistant who just started ministry not up to five years ago. He's already flourishing. Why? He connected himself to people that are on course. People that are following divine order. People that are following direction. And things are working. You know in life, who you follow determines what follow you. Who you follow determines what follows you. So you must choose the direction you will go. Hear me? Make no mistake about it. Title does not mean direction. You can be a pastor and still miss road. You can be a pastor's wife and still not be directed. You can be a pastor and be carnal. You can be a pastor's wife and be super carnal. You can be a deacon or deaconess and be carnal. So it's not an issue of title. You can carry title and be misbehaving. 
Have you discovered that even the title does not even put a check on some people? If you want to misbehave, you will misbehave. It's a choice. Is it not a bishop in worry that went to pregnant somebody and asked his friend to come and start for the uh, child dedication? So why didn't the title save him? Bishop. Why the title save him? It's not in title. If title save people, some people won't be misbehaving. No wonder Paul said, <laughs> I put my body under subjection. Least after preaching to people, I will not become a cast away. I put my body. You must put your life under control. Divine direction puts you under control. So that you will not get out of control. Hear me? If you are not divinely directed, you will be out of control. Be out of control. What are the requirements for divine direction? We looked at two yesterday. We are looking at another two today. Number one, you must be committed to following divine direction. Now, permit me to say this. Commitment is a function of interest. What you are interested in, you will be committed to. Commitment is a function of interest. You cannot be committed to what you are not interested. You must be committed to following. For say, be ye followers of me as I am of Christ. So if you are following, it requires commitment. You are committed to following. You are committed to following. Now hear me. The 50 sons of the prophets, when they started, they were committed. At a point, they were no longer interested. I cannot be following. Only one person was now committed, called Elisha. To the point that he was being mocked. When they called them, they called all of them together. Scripture called them 50 sons of the prophet. They were following. They were following. But at a point, they were no longer committed in following. It's a very simple thing. They made their choice. You they hear God, me, I they hear God. Your day, na more day. You speak in tongue, I speak in tongue. Confusion has entered. We must be committed to following. <laughs> that scripture says, so shall we know. Then shall we know if we have followed on to serve the Lord. Let me tell you the implication of following through. When you follow through, there will always be an intervention. When you are committed in following instruction, direction, anytime danger is knocking, there will be an intervention. There will be an intervention. Let me give, bring our mind back to this classic example of what happened some months back. Papa was on a journey to Israel. He was on a journey to Israel. No signal at all that he was going to be attacked. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? No signal that he was going to be attacked. But because of connectivity and consistent followership, his father saw it. What you don't see, your father can see. Your father see past you. He knows me. <laughs> he came. They were doing covenant hour prayer. The man arrived and went straight to the house. Straight to the house. There shall be no death. What God told him, what is the living doing among the dead? <laughs> he said, I anointing everywhere. There shall be no death in this house. He anointed everywhere. Anointed kitchen, anointed bedroom, anointed office, anointed mandate office, anointed the whole compound. He was waiting for Papa to come back. When he came back, he anointed, he anointed the wife, everybody, and he left. That looks like a Thursday to Friday. The journey was on Monday. A new plane. They were far away in Israel. The plane 
just suddenly lost control. Something just got disconnected. And thank God for the wisdom of the Holy Ghost. The chief pilot just handed over to him. He said, hold on. The thing was just going down, sinking down. He just went and just detached something. The thing went up back. They were heading to the Mediterranean. If there was no connectivity, God wouldn't have spoken. Hey, your son is about to enter danger. Go and stop that plan. Hear me? Staying far. Satan, they call you. Anytime you stay far from your guide, Satan, they call you. When the 50 sons of the prophet started staying far, they were on the verge of being erased eternally from destiny and they were truly erased. True or false? Your guide does not need you. You are the one that needs your guide. He doesn't need you. You are the one that needs him. Likewise, the Holy Ghost is not seeking for your fellowship. You are the one that is seeking for his fellowship. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you forsake him, he will also do what? Forsake you. He's not looking for you. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you forsake him, he will also do what? Forsake you. Forsake you. When Samson went on his journey, was the Holy Ghost looking for him? No! Since he left the place of fellowship, he was not looking for him. And when he missed, he said, Lord, give me a second chance. There's always a second chance. So, the commitment will be initiated by you and nobody else. The commitment, you must be committed to following. Because your life success, your life progress is tied to it. Studio, please, I need this message. The one of yesterday and today. Your life success, your life progress is tied to it. So, you must be committed to following. I remember one thing said to me in 2015. He said, no matter how many times Papa rebukes you, please stay connected. There are some people you rebuke. I'm not... Wait here. Uh -uh. You be pastor, me be pastor. You speak in talk, I speak in talk. You ordain, I'm ordained. Now your choice. But you forget that in the realm of the spirit, rank differs. There are constables, there are corporals, there are sergeants, there are inspectors. Oh, you don't know? There are last corporal. So, you must... You know, some people see rebuke as hatred. Him the father loves. He does what? If you are left alone, you are on your way to disaster. That's why one of the things that makes some people not to stay committed in following that's a rebuke. That's why I need all the anointing of Bishop Abuye because if there is anyone that have received more rebuke in this ministry, it's Bishop Abuye, true of us. But yet his heart has never fainted one day. Still consistent following. Still committed following. He said, I'd rather be number two in God's plan than to be number one in my own plan. Don't he, doesn't he have what it takes to start a flourishing ministry? He has it. But he said, no, I'd rather be number two in God's plan than to be number one in my own plan. But it does not go without a rebuke. He has been rebuked openly. He has cried too. He has been rebuked and he cried. But that one didn't change his heart of followership. He has never wanted to say, uh, why are you rebuking me like this? I'm, I'm not following again. <laughs> you hear me? Commitment is a choice. Say with me, it's a choice. If you are interested, you will be committed. Where you are going, somebody must lead you there. As far as life and destiny is concerned, where you are going, someone must lead you there. Why? 
his ways are past finding out. So you must be committed to God in fellowship, in prayer, in word study, staying connected to your instructors and to your guide so that you don't miss it out of the way. Because anybody can miss it. Anybody. Because when pride enters you, you are in trouble. <laughs> The meek will he guide in judgment and the meek will he teach his ways. Pride can just enter anybody. And when pride enter you, why are you talking to me like that? <laughs> he may not voice it out, but he will be saying it in his heart. He's taking too much, oh, he's taking too much. <laughs> oh my God. You see this man standing here? I've seen more rebuke. Both open, brutal. Um, you have not seen rebuke. But the truth is this. I've known one thing. Don't stay disconnected from people that are lifting you up. If you stay disconnected, now you finish yourself. So you must stay connected, following. You must keep following. Who have seen a gentle coach before? A coach that does not shout on his players. Raise your hand. Eh? Have you seen a coach that does not shout on his players? But who plays the match? Your coach can see your faults. Throw of us. He can see your faults. Your, your coach can see your errors. He can see your weakness. He can see your shortcoming. But you are still the one that will play the match. He will tell you, this is what I'm noticing. Correct this side, correct this side. Correct this side, correct this side. But your coach can never play your match for you. Hear me, in the journey of life, na match will they play. True of us. <laughs> if you don't have a guide... Who will tell you that you are making mistake? You know, that's what many of us don't like to hear. You are making mistake. What you are doing is not right. It may deny you at the top. We don't like to hear it. But it is good they tell you before you miss it. But from the moment you tell them, oh, this thing is not good. It will not help you. Anything you fail to correct now, it will show when you get to the top and it will bring you down. I'm telling you the truth. It will show when you get to the top. So if you must stay com committed in following divine guidance, number one, get ready. You must be corrected. Number two, you will be rebuked. Correction is not a is to help keep you in direction. Correction is to help keep you in direction. To be on the right path. Just like your child now. If your child does anything wrong, do you just allow him? Allow him. They are all children. When they grow, they will change. Spare the rod and spoil the child. Allow him. He's a child. Now lie, my own koboko they my back pocket. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Allow him, he's a child. When he grow up, he will change. It's a lie. It's a lie. So when you are correcting him, you are shaping him. You are giving him direction. That's not the way to go. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way to go. That's not the way. This is the way. So being committed is your choice. And hear me, if you choose not to be committed, you are bought your journey. You are bought your journey. Where your commitment dies in following, that's where your struggle starts. Your struggle, you begin to struggle. Because everything seems right. Because you have never given a chance 
for them to show you this is the right way. This is the wrong way. He said, I'm the Lord that leadeth thee in the way that thou shouldest go, not in the way that thou choosest to go. I am the one, I am the Lord thy God that leadeth thee in the way that thou shouldest go. You, you know the meaning of thou shouldest go? This is where you are supposed to go, not where you feel like going. Where thou shouldest go and make profit. So God knows where our profit in is. So where your commitment stops, that's where your struggle starts. Number two requirement, be filled with the Spirit always. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. For you to be filled with the spirit always, look at this, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, in hymns, in spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Let the word of Christ dwell within you richly. So there is more word intake that will keep you, that will keep you from going carnal. How will a young man keep his way right with the Lord? So the more of the word, the more the check. The word puts us in check. The word keeps us spiritual. The word keeps, kills carnality. It kills the tendency of the flesh. You hear me? The flesh has many tendencies. It can jump up and begin to misbehave. Am I saying the truth? The flesh can just jump up and begin to misbehave. So every time we are in the word and in prayer, we are putting our spirit man in touch with God. We are sharpening our sensitivity to the voice of God. We are sharpening our conscience to know what is right and what is wrong. So we need it. We need daily word intake. Anytime something is taking you away from his presence, watch it. You are losing spirituality. And you can't do spirituality and not increase carnality. Anytime things are driving you, moving you, Keeping you away from the presence of God, you are losing spirituality. But that will not be your testimony. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better, amen. amen. So we need to be in touch. We need to be in touch with God, in touch with the word, in touch with the word. What are the benefits of divine direction? We looked at three yesterday, we are looking at three again. God walks with the lead. So if God is leading you, he will walk with you. Mark chapter 16 and verse 20. And the Lord was walking with them. And the Lord was walking with them. Confirming his word with signs and with wonders. If God does not walk with you, you go walk like elephant and eat like ant. And the Lord was walking with them. If God does not walk with you, you go suffer. You go struggle. Everything you are doing, you will be exerting energy, but you cannot be producing any good results. It's a terrible thing for you to sweat out everything that you will get. And the Lord was walking with them. When God walks with you, little effort, much results. When God works with you, it's a work of grace, not a work of muscle. Scripture says, it's not of him that will it, not of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. You have used your energy enough. Allow God to be involved. 
I remember one of the testimony of Dr. Yonggi Cho. He said, he got to a point he discovered that he was struggling to minister. Struggling to bless the people. The Holy Ghost told him, you are on your own now. You are on your own. You are doing everything on your own. That was when he was led to write in that book, Holy Spirit, my senior partner. So before he goes to preach, he says, Holy Spirit, go with me. Go with me. <laughs> when God go with you, you can't come empty. You are coming to minister choir to take praise worship or anything. Holy Spirit, go with me. That's why some people, when they come, they will carry song and they will be singing. They will be sweating under the song. Carnality. Why? Because there is no prayer backup. No prayer backup. Hear me? You can write five songs and your five songs will not bless anybody because you came carnal. You came alone. You can copy Papa message and come and stand here. It's in the word. It's in the word. The Holy Ghost is not with you. You will end up talking dry that day. Ian Ban said, any message prepared in prayer is the one that will bless the people. Not the one you calculated from your head. But when God goes with you, <laughs> results must come out. Testimony must flow. Results must come out. Testimony must flow. When I was choir director, any person that will stand to take praise worship, minimum 30 minutes praying in tongues. I learned that from Pastor Ndubisi, who was one of the first choir master in this ministry. He was the one that handed over to me. 30 minutes! Blood. The person will arrive early, nothing less than 3 o'clock. He will be at the back. Lakote kosi kata. Twice every week. Any person that is impressed, he must pray with me minimum one hour. If you miss it that day, you will not do praise worship throughout that month. It's not this one. They will come later and they will sneak and enter. Sneak and enter. I send you out. If we are only five, we remain five. Because it's not a canal walk. When the Lord is with you, you're, you're, he takes over everything. You are not the one doing it. No wonder Paul say, less of me and more of him. Less of me and more of him. Anytime Mike Mudok is preaching, Holy Ghost, glorify Jesus. Holy Ghost, glorify Jesus. <laughs> I had under the cross, not for me to be seen, but Jesus to be glorified. Take over my tongue, take over my lips. What is he saying? <laughs> it is your walk. I'm just a channel. When the Lord is walking with you, do you know God can be walking with you in your business and you will dominate that business? When the Lord is walking with you, your business attracts favor. You attract unusual favor. You command unusual attraction. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Stop doing things on your own. It's not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. Number two, benefits of divine guidance, God walks through the lead. Thank God I've already mentioned it. God walks through you. We are just a channel. He walks through us. He walks through us. If he cannot walk through you, he can't reach anybody through you. I remember one of my pastors, he prayed one prayer. I began to ask him. He said, Lord, whatever you will do through me, do in me. If you will use me to bless somebody, bless me first. That's a strong prayer. He walks through you. So if he's going to, and they say, they say, a water that, a pipe that carries water never suffer what? Can't suffer dryness. So if God is walking through you, man, you are a channel of blessing. So you are an instrument of blessing. God wants to walk through you. He wants to reach out to many people through you, not to destroy many people through you. Some people, they are instruments of destruction. That is why through them, Satan is destroying people. 
tearing people. When they stay in church, is to gossip. They will gossip pastor, gossip associate pastor, gossip deacon, deaconess, everybody. Satan is walking through you. It's, God is not walking through you. It's Satan that is walking through you. Am I correct? I know some people, is not, they are not happy with me. But I must tell you the truth. How many people have been blessed through you? How many people need to be blessed through you this year? How many people do you know to tear with your mouth this year? Watch it. Anytime you are doing the contrary, the Holy Ghost quietly leaves you. Why? That's not the assignment he's sent to accomplish in your life. It's not walking through you. Satan has taken over you to walk through you. Now hear me, we have two options. Either God is walking through you or Satan is walking through you. Choose one. So every day, something needs to walk through you. May you not be a passage to the devil. May you not be a passage to the devil. People that God walks through, hear the end implication. <laughs> I've not called the seed of Jacob to seek me in vain. Paul said again, your labors of love will not go unrewarded. God never uses anyone or walks through anyone and leave him empty. So you will not end up empty. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. And lastly, God renders the enemy of the lead helpless. One of the benefits of being guided, God renders your enemies helpless. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leaded me. Let's read that scripture, please. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leaded me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So you see, his leading is for his name's sake, it's not for our sake. Number four, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So when God guides you, he renders your enemies helpless. They will see the blessing, but they cannot stop the blessing. They can't stop your open door. They can't stop what is to come to you. Jesus said, I'm the one that openeth and no man can close. Funny enough, the key is not in the hand of Satan. Every good and perfect gift cometh from above. From the Father of light, in whom there is no variableness, neither any shadow of turning. Your enemies, they are helpless. I say your enemies, they will remain helpless. That's why the more they try to stop or frustrate you, the more the blessing is increasing upon you. That's the truth. God keeps your enemy helpless. Scripture says, when God blessed Isaac, the Philistines envied him. The blessings of God upon your life will generate envy. You better say amen. Do you want pity? So you can't be blessed and not be envied. When he dug the first well, they close it. He dug the second one, they close it. He dug the third one. They say, leave him alone. He's going somewhere. Your enemies will leave you alone. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. Rise up to your feet. I want you to pray one prayer. Lord, walk with me. I have struggled enough. It's time for you to walk with me. It's time for you to walk with me. Lord, I want to walk with you. People you work with, they don't struggle. People you work with, they don't struggle. They don't suffer. Their life is not running on slow motion. 
Lord, I want to walk with you. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord, walk with me. I want you involved in my business, in my family, in my career. Concerning my expectation, Lord, walk with me. Concerning my marriage, please, if you are not married, Lord, I want you involved in my marriage. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord, I want you to walk with me. Lord, walk with me. Lord, walk with me. The people you walk with, their destiny, their life is decorated. Their life is enjoying transformation. Labo sheko hozi name. Leanto predi zezo. Jesus. Jesus. Walk with me. Holy Spirit. Walk with me. You are my dependable helper. You have never failed once. You have never disappointed once. Lord, walk with me. I want you to walk with me. Lord, walk with me. If you don't walk with me, I will struggle. I will suffer. I will crawl. Lord, I want you to walk with me. I need you to walk with me. I don't want up to I don't want to end up a failure. I need you to walk with me. Lord, walk with me. Lord, walk with me. Lord, I need you to walk with me. I need you to guide me. I need you to walk through me. In the name of Jesus Christ. I need you to walk with me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, walk with me. Lord, walk with me. Lord, walk with me. In the name of Jesus, walk with me. Lord, walk with me. Lord, walk with me. Lord, walk with me. I need you to walk with me. Lord, walk with me. In my assignment in Lafayette, Lord, walk with me. I want you to walk with me consistently, regularly, permanently. In the name of Jesus, walk with me. I need you to walk with me. In the name of Jesus, let this month be an outstanding month. Walk with me. The Lord was walking with them. Confirming his word with signs and with wonders following. Ma onte ki kato leberija. Zekorandi elo prekletie sozia. Lord, walk with me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. As you partake of this communion, today mark the end of struggle in your life. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Whatever form of frustration you have suffered, I decree by this communion that evil body is taken away from you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every result you have been desiring to get, as the Lord walk with you, you will not exert effort again. The mighty hand of God will prevail for you. What others are struggling to get by the hand of God, it will be cheaply delivered. This month, your result will surpass whatever you have ever gotten. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. For you, for your family, for your career, no more failure. No more failure. No more failure. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Only you can do.